Hello and welcome to Shadow Facts of Air, our Dufour 36 classic yacht. The aim of this presentation is not to be a slick, polished presentation with special effects and whizzy graphics, but rather a virtual handover for the skipper and first mate to explain how all the major systems on the boat work. Embedded somewhere in this video is a code word which you will be asked to repeat as evidence that you have watched it from end to end. This code word is not present in the YouTube version of this video. At any point, you can start, stop, rewind or begin again this video. And once you have watched it from end to end, please return the tablet to the office along with any questions you may have and we'll be delighted to help you. Now let's go to the boat and start by having a look at the engine. Welcome aboard Shadow Facts of Air. We'll start by having a look at the engine and to access the front of the engine the whole companionway box simply lifts out. Now we have access to most of the engine. The most important thing to check is that when the engine is started there is ample cooling water coming out of the exhaust. If there isn't the seawater strainer is this grey box here. The top comes off just by hand, it's hand tight and you can lift the strainer out and remove whatever has been sucked into the intake, such as a plastic bag, jellyfish, etc. Pop it in the bilge, put the top back on, and normally that cures the problem. If it doesn't cure the problem, or if it's run dry for some time, the water pump is just here. And if the rubber impeller is burnt out, just remove the six screws holding the faceplate on, pull out the remains of the old impeller, find the new one in the engine spares kit, pop it in and replace the face plate. And for sea water, that's it. It comes through this box to the pump, into the engine and out of the exhaust. Every engine is serviced before every charter, so there's no real need to do any daily checks. But if you wanted to, the things that you could look at if you were on a long charter, say for two or three weeks or more, are the tension of the drive belt. There is a spare in the engine spares kit if required. The heat exchanger, it's just in shadow here, but there's a radiator cap on top of this green box. And if you remove it when the engine is cold and only when it's cold, pop your fingers in and you should just about be able to feel water. If you can't, it needs topping up. It's just tap water, fresh water. And if you overfill it, it doesn't really matter. It will just spit the excess out into the bilge. The only other thing you might want to check is the oil level. So we'll move into the starboard aft cabin where there is an access panel just behind the door to the cabin. We're now in the starboard aft cabin and this large box hides the back and starboard side of the engine and by undoing the slip bolt you can slide it backwards. Which will reveal the starboard side and aft end of the engine. The yellow cap just here is the oil dipstick. Just like a car, it has a high mark and a low mark, and the oil level should be somewhere between the two. If it does need topping up, there is a bottle of oil in the cockpit locker. It goes in here. And please add small amounts, then recheck the level, as these engines have a very small sump, and it's very easy to put too much oil in. Much easier to add a little than to try and take some out. Removing this box also gives unfettered access to the water strainer, so if you have picked up a jellyfish, this is an easier place to get at it. The gearbox, which is hiding way down here, doesn't need any checks from week to week. The oil is changed every winter and it's quite happy to see it through a full season. The batteries on Shadowfax are mostly located underneath the starboard aft bunk, but over the winter we took the opportunity to increase the leisure battery capacity by adding an extra leisure battery underneath the false floor in the wardrobe in the starboard aft cabin. The control switches for all the batteries are in the port aft cabin. This one is labelled service to turn the service batteries on and off. This one is labelled engine so you can isolate the engine battery at night if you wish. And the one far left labelled emergency start which doesn't have a key um, is to allow you to start the engine using the domestic batteries in case the engine battery was flat. The key for it's in the navigator's table. 
and if you put it in and turn it on, now I could use the domestic batteries to start the engine. The gas system on Shadowfax consists of two bottles which are out in the cockpit. One is connected and ready for use and the spare is full should you need to change it. To operate the cooker, in the cupboard underneath the galley sink, labelled gas shut off, there is a secondary gas tap, which is here. This should be in line with the pipe for on and across the pipe for off. There is also the gas leak detector and sounder in here. And if that sounds, you should shut the gas off at the bottle, open all the hatches and then investigate. To use the cooker, once the gas has been turned on at the bottle and the secondary gas tap, choose which burner you wish, push the knob in, turn it clockwise, light the gas and hold the button pressed in for 5 or 10 seconds. If the flame goes out when you release the button, light it again but hold it in for a little longer. This is a flame failure device, so if the flame blows out whilst you're cooking, it will just turn the gas off, in which case just turn it on again, light it and carry on. Shadowfax is equipped with two water tanks, both of equal capacity, and the capacities are clearly shown in the skipper's handbook along with the capacity of the diesel tank. At handover, one tank will be switched on and one will be off. So when you've used the tank that's connected, close the tap, open the other, and you've used half your water. I can't get the camera in this cupboard, I'm afraid, but we're in the cupboard underneath the uh, wash basin sink in the heads. Just behind these two pipes are two small taps. One is on, one is off. All our boats have ITT Jabsco twist and lock pumps, which are reliable and easy to use. When you've used the toilet, move this lever to the right hand position and using the pump, about 10 or 15 strokes will empty the bowl. Move this switch to the left hand position and using the same pump again, another 15 or 20 strokes will rinse the bowl out and clear the pipes of the boat. None of our boats have holding tanks they are all straight to ocean, so please don't use them in a marina. The toilets will handle anything that you've eaten and small amounts of toilet paper without an issue. Putting wet wipes or any sanitary products down the toilet will block it instantly. We're now at the navigation station and this large panel here is the 12 volt control system. Everything is labelled, navigation lights, steaming light, anchor light, deck light, cabin lights one and two. Windless switch is redundant. I'll show you why in just a moment. Water pressure for pressure at the taps. Bilge pump, it's not on a float switch, so don't leave it switched on. Just pump it out each morning till you hear all the water is gone and then turn it off. The fridge should only be used whilst you're on shore power or the engine is running. It takes a considerable amount of power but it's very well insulated and once it's cold it stays cold for a very long time. Shower pump, this is the drain pump, so if you're using the shower this needs to be on and there's a small switch in the shower which when operated will pump the grey water away. Navigation systems will turn on, so we're going to have a look at that in a moment. 12 volts socket and music system and autopilot which we'll have a look at a little bit later. This switch here, position one is engine battery voltage, two is domestic battery voltage, this one here is litres of water used and the capacity is shown in the handbook and whilst this is on the diesel gauge works but only whilst this switch is on it's designed to save power when not in use. This section here is the 240 volt intake so the battery charger is on, the water heater at the moment is off, this is the immersion heater. So you can have hot water without running the engine when you're on shore power. 240 volt sockets and the main circuit breaker. If you plug into a marina and everything trips out, press this blue button to reset it. 
the circuit breaker for the electric anchor windlass is located behind the switch panel. So remove the hand bearing compass, pull this down, and there are two circuit breakers here. One is for the power main power from the battery supply, and the other one is for the electric windlass. Just beneath the switch panel is the music system. Its main purpose is to get the weather, but it's also nice to have some music on board. There is a 12 volt cigarette lighter type socket here for charging phones, and four USB points also for charging phones, tablets, etc. Please don't plug two iPads into one socket at the same time. It won't handle that kind of power and a 240 volt socket which only works whilst you're on shore power. All our boats are equipped with ICOM handheld VHF radios which are waterproof and float so it's safe to have them out in the cockpit. The fixed VHF set here is turned on by pressing and holding the bottom right button and once it starts itself up if you press this button once its volume Press it again, it's squelch. Press it again, it's channel select. Or you can select channels with the up and down buttons. It hasn't had time to find the satellites yet, so it's showing no position. But if I had a serious problem, I would lift this red flap, press the distress button in for five seconds or more, and it will transmit your exact location and an automatic mayday. There are two plotters on Shadowfax, both of which are identical to each other. One is at the navigator's table and one out in the cockpit. They're the latest Garmin plotters and very easy to use. At the moment it's showing us in Dunstaffnage Marina, even down to which berth we're in. To reduce the scale, you can pinch in and pinch out. And let's say we wanted to go up the sound of Mull. The first place we would want to get to is between the two lighthouses at the southern end of Lismore. So we can zoom in to exactly where we want to go. Tap the screen and it's telling me at the top left corner to steer 274 degrees magnetic for 5.92 nautical miles. And if I was to follow that course it would take me exactly to that spot. Whilst you're underway it will very quickly work out what the tidal stream is doing to you and change the predictive course. This makes it very accurate and to see the whole of your course you can zoom out again and have both places on the screen at the same time. This is purely a backup to the paper charts and pilot books but does make life a lot easier. Just beneath the navigator's seat is a bilge water alarm which will flash and make a noise if it detects water in the bilge. Also just beneath the lid of the navigator seat are the heating controls. Uh, it's very difficult to see the screen in this blisteringly hot sunshine that we experience so often on the west coast. But if you press and hold this middle button on the right hand side for five seconds, the heating system will come on. Then you can choose temperature up or temperature down. And to turn it off, press and hold the same power button again for about five seconds. It's a diesel fired blown warm air system, which is very economical, only uses about half a litre an hour. And on this system, you do not need to have the engine running to start the heating. There are a number of seacocks on this boat, as you would expect. There is a clear plan of them in the skipper's handbook, and you should familiarise yourself with the location of them before departing. One worth special mention is the one just to the port side of the engine cover space. Um, it's a requirement of the MCA to be able to shut the cooling water intake remotely. So if there was a fire in the engine space, you can close it. To do so, pull this black lever hard and it will close the cooling water intake. To reset it, you'll have to remove the covers at the aft end of the engine and reset it manually. Tucked away above the navigator's table, is the nighttime chart reading light which is a small red LED and it is permanently on. There is no switch for this. 
If it's just dusk and you want some light but not terribly bright, just tap the bulb and to turn it back to red, tap it again. So now we're going to go up on deck, so please press pause and join me again at the bows. Shadowfax has 50 metres of anchor chain, 50 metres, and it's marked every 10 metres. So at 10 metres there is one mark, 20 there are two, and so on. Yellow plastic markers you're looking for, all apart from the last set which are red, just to tell you you're coming to the end of the chain. The bitter end is securely tied to the boat with a length of rope, so in extremis it could be cut with a knife. To operate it, there is a hand controller inside the anchor locker. Which just has two buttons, up or down. The engine needs to be running to operate this system, partly because it takes so much power, but also it's good practice to make sure that you can start the engine before you pull the hook out of the ground. You can operate the windlass manually as well. This handle over at the starboard side fits onto the crown nut here and if you want to lower it manually, undoing it half a turn will allow the chain to free fall and a good punch clockwise will stop it. You can also recover the chain manually by using the same handle, fits into this slot here and it's pump action on a ratchet. In practice though it's much easier to recover the chain by hand and then sort it out from on deck. The forward water tank filler is located on the starboard bow. The mainsail on Shadowfax has three reefs and all the reefs are led back to the cockpit and the clutches are labelled and we'll be looking at those shortly. The life raft for Shadowfax is on the coach roof and if you needed to deploy it you would just pull this red string which releases the quick release and throw the, and throw the whole box over the side. This is the painter for the life raft and as it drifts away from the boat it will pull tight and inflate the raft. You can use then use the painter to pull the raft back to the boat, all climb in and cut yourselves free. If the boat went down and nobody did anything, this device here when it gets to about three meters underwater will detonate and cut through the rope and the life raft will pop up ready inflated. Under the spray hood at the port side is another plotter, which is exactly like the one down below, and two clutches for reef one and the kicking strap, vang, whatever you prefer to call it. The easiest way to put reefs in is to lower the main halyard, tighten the appropriate reef, and then retention the main halyard. On the starboard side under the spray hood is another bank of clutches. Genoa halyard, you shouldn't need to touch that one, that's been correctly tensioned before you were handed over the boat. Reef 2, Reef 3, Main Halyard and Main Sheet. The boat's set up for shorthanded sailing, so everything is led back to the cockpit. When stood at the wheel, the binnacle in front of you contains all the instrumentation. At the left hand side is the auto helm. To use it, get onto the heading that you want, press auto and it will hold that course. Small adjustments plus and minus one, bigger adjustments plus and minus ten, and to return to wheel control, press standby. In the middle we have wind, showing where it's coming from, and wind speed. And at the right hand side we have depth under the keel. So the actual depth of water here is just shy of four metres. All our boats measure depth under the keel, and the actual dimensions of the boat beneath the waterline are shown in the skipper's handbook. Speed through the water and cumulative log. To use the auto helm it's important firstly to lower this lever to engage the electric motor's drive with the wheel. Once you finish with the auto helm you can still hand steer with it in this position but it's quite noisy and quite hard work. Much easier just to lift the lever up again which disengages the drive and makes the steering quiet and light. To start the engine we press the button in the middle of the throttle lever in to disengage the gearbox and select about half to three quarters power, either forward or astern 
it doesn't matter because we've disconnected the gearbox. Now we'll move to the control panel, which is just under the first step to the companion way. To start the engine on Shadow Fax, press the power switch on, then lift the glow plug switch up for a count of 10. Don't press it down, it won't do anything and the engine won't start. After 10 seconds, press the big black button to start the engine. You can probably see that the tachometer is not working. If that's the case, when you start it at low revs, it sometimes does this. Give it a burst of revs and it will come to life. You might think it's not important, but if the tachometer is not running, it's not charging your batteries. And after a quick burst of revs, it will continue to work. Now is a good time to check that there is plenty of water coming out of the exhaust, which is on the port quarter on this boat. To stop the engine, pull the T-bar out, push it back in and turn the power off. The aft water tank filler is located on the port side of the sugar scoop. The diesel filler is located on the starboard side of the sugar scoop. Just forward of the backstay at deck level, you can just make out the access point to the emergency steering. If anything was failing on the steering system, you could remove this disc with a winch handle and using the big metal pole in the cockpit locker that looks like a piece of scaffold pole, it fits down this hole straight onto the rudder stock and she becomes a tiller steered boat. Before you leave on your holiday, please take with you all the dock lines except any that might be shackled to the pontoon. Please also take with you the shore power lead so you can enjoy shore power at another marina. Before you depart, please study the tidal stream chart for the marina in our office as this will help you make a safe and stress-free departure. When you return at the end of your holiday, your last job is to get diesel. The diesel pump is located on leg D, D for diesel, and is clearly marked from seaward. Then bring the boat back to any berth on leg F, F, Foxtrot, and tie her up securely. Please then make your way up to the office, and we'll be delighted to welcome you back. Please take time to fill the water tanks on the yacht before you depart. We hope you have a wonderful holiday and thank you for choosing Alba Sailing.